prayer for the 2022 national and local elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective, Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language, Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm, Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord, that genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates Bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue our Lenten discipline and observances, we ask our Lord Jesus Christ today to teach us about true holiness. A holiness that is not seen only in name or image, but a holiness that is alive, a holiness that bears fruit in our lives. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of Christ's love, let us first acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, 
forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, he answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers. So I know well that they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. If they ask me, What is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. 
Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is His kindness towards those who fear Him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffered death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, 
leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. And uh, I would like to welcome all of you to the Manila Cathedral in this beautiful Sunday morning. It is a joy for me to celebrate together with all of you here this Sunday Eucharist and also to those who are watching us through our online broadcast of this Mass. Salamat din po sa inyong pakikiisa sa ating banal na pagdiriwang ngayong umaga na ito. As we continue our Lenten observances, we also continue our striving for holiness. Kapag dumarating po ang panahon ng kwaresma, sinisikap po natin maging banal sa ating araw-araw na pamumuhay. Pero ngayong araw na ito ay tinuturo sa atin ni Jesus. Ano nga ba ang tunay na kabanalan? What is true holiness? If we want to be holy, then first, we must learn from Jesus what is it to be holy. In our gospel reading today, we see some people who were concerned about holiness. But for them, holiness is like a name or a title. You are holy and the other person is a sinner. They were so concerned that some Galileans, some people in Siloam died. And they branded them immediately as sinners. And they immediately thought of themselves as less sinners, as holier than other people. But Jesus teaches them that holiness is not based on a name. Holiness is not based on your reputation or your image. Holiness should be alive. And it should bear fruit in your life. That is why Jesus told them as a response to their inquiry, the parable of the fig tree that does not bear fruit. Para kay Jesus, ang tunay na kabanalan ay hindi lamang makikita sa pangalan. Hindi lamang makikita sa titulo mo. Hindi lamang makikita sa reputasyon o imahin mo sa ibang tao. Ang tunay na kabanalan ay makikita kapag nagbubunga ito sa iyong buhay. Tayo pa naman, masyado tayong attached sa names, sa titles. And sometimes, even now, apparently, holiness 
can be seen in names and titles. I remember one time there was an event in a church. And upon entering, as we were guiding the people to their seats, one woman told us, I am sister so and so. <laughs> Parang nababago siya kapag may sister yung pangalan niya. No? Kailangan may sister. Hindi pwedeng uh, ako lang si ganito. Hindi. I am sister ganito. No? I am brother ganito. No? E doon siya inupo sa pinakagilid. Naku, lalong nagalit. <laughs> Sometimes, when you attach something to your name, kailangan may sister, kailangan may brother, it is as if you are holier than all other people. And you must be seated in front. Sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, we look at holiness as a name that is fixed on our own names. But Jesus tells us, no, holiness is not based on names or titles. Alam niyo ko ba, minsan, meron pang gumamit ng pangalan ko dito. Magsisimba at sabi, kaibigan ako ni Father Kali. <laughs> Kaya tila yung mga ano namin, ah, pinaupo sa magandang upuan. Pagkatapos ng misa, sinabi sa akin, Father, may bisita po kayo. Sabi ko, wala akong hinihintay na bisita. No? Eh, ginamit ko yung pangalan nyo at naupo pa sa magandang upuan. Oh, yan, no? When we attach ourselves to names. My dear brothers and sisters, as we strive to become holy this season of Lent, we are reminded that holiness is not just about names. Holiness is seen in our lives if it bears fruit in our lives. In our first reading today from the book of Exodus, interestingly, Moses asked God, What is your name? Baka napansin po ninyo sa unang pagbasa natin. Tinanong ni Moises ang Diyos, Ano po ba ang pangalan ninyo? And surprisingly, God gave this name. He said, I am who I am. Sa Tagalog, Ako nga si ako. Kakaibang pangalan, no? Di naman talaga pangalan yun. What kind of name is that? I am who am. Ako nga si ako. The God of your fathers. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. God teaches Moses in the first reading that His holiness is not attached to His name. His holiness can be seen in His works. His holiness can be seen in His love for your ancestors, for your family, for your nation. Parang itinuturo ng Diyos kay Moises, yung pangalan ko, doon mo makikita kung sino ako. Hindi lang sa pangalan, kundi sa ginawa ko. That is why our, in our responsorial psalm today, we say, the Lord is kind and merciful. We do not just mention His name, we mention what He did for us. Holiness is not attached to a name. 
holiness can be seen in the fruits of your works, of your deeds, and in your life. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, let us not get stuck with names. Wag laging nakatingin sa pangalan. Tanungin mo din, ano na ba ang nagawa mo? Hindi lang ano bang pangalan mo, ang tanungin, ano bang nagawa mo? Sometimes we get stuck with names and titles. And we want to achieve names and titles for ourselves. Minsan kapag may dumadalaw na opisyal sa atin, kalimbawa sa opisina, sa eskwelahan, sa pamayanan, kapag may dumalaw na opisyal, ilalagay natin sa tarpulin, malaking malaki, kagalang-galang. Nako, kagalang-galang ha ba talaga, no? Tanungin, no? Kagalang-galang ba talaga yan? Ang hilig natin sa titles. Kahit sa aming mga pare, kapag pare ka pa lang, no? Reverend Father. May iba nag-aambisyon maging monsignor. Kaya para ang title nila, hindi lang reverend. Kapag monsignor ka na, very reverend. Ha? Duma dumadami na. Kapag naging obispo ka na most reverend. Pero hindi lang makikita ang kabanalan ng pari sa reverend. O very o most reverend. Holiness is not attached to names. And we should not dream for names and titles for ourselves. Holiness should be seen in our lives. Nandito yung mga bata ng uh, tulay ng kabataan. No? Kapitbahay po natin sila dito. Every morning, they celebrate Mass with us. Mga bata, huwag kayong mangangarap ng pangalan lang. <laughs> Baka ang pangarap nyo, pangarap ko magkaroon ng pangalan para sa sarili ko. Hindi yan ang tamang pangarap. Ang tamang pangarap, makatulong sa kapwa. Maging mabuti at banal ang buhay. Ah, tama? Oo kayo? Tama kayo? <laughs> Kasi baka ang pangarap natin, pangalan lang. Pero wala ka naman palang gagawing mabuti. Walang kwenta ang pangalan. In our second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, he reminded the community in Corinth. He said, Our ancestors in Israel, they had a name. The chosen people. Wow! What a beautiful name for Israel. The chosen ones of God. But they got stuck only on the name. Some of them forgot true holiness is not just about the name but being faithful to God. And some of them have grumbled against God. Some of them betrayed God. Holiness does not just remain in your name. It should be seen in the fruits of your lives. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue our Eucharistic celebration, and as we continue our journey this Lenten season in anticipation of the Easter celebration, let us prepare our hearts. Let us ask ourselves, is my holiness only in name? Ang kabanalan ko ba? ay sa pangalan lang at hindi naman pala nakikita sa totoong buhay ko. 
let us allow ourselves to be taught by Jesus. Let us strive for true holiness, a holiness that bears fruit in our lives. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of, of the body, body and, and life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. God is kind and merciful. He hears the pleas of His people and brings them to the promised land. Let us place our needs before Him. And for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Holy Father, the Pope, may inspire us all to a more fervent devotion to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may always be reverent in the presence of God, as was Moses before the burning bush. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we take practical steps to help the poor and starving have a more equal share in this world's goods. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, especially those afflicted with COVID-19, and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our dead may be purified in the mercy and compassion of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Loving Father, receive the prayers of a penitent people who come before you in humility and faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our uh, collection for this Sunday's Masses will be given to our brothers and sisters affected greatly by the war in Ukraine. This may be a fruit of the holiness that we are striving for this season of Lent. And so we thank all of you for uh, joining in this uh, collection. And uh, our collection will be given to our brothers and sisters in Ukraine.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts, by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, 
On that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to deceive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come, may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for an important announcement. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, is very much concerned about the violence that is happening in uh, uh, Ukraine, between Ukraine and uh, Russia. And so he decided that this coming uh, March 25, Solemnity of the Annunciation of our Lord, that is a Friday, uh, we will be joining Pope Francis in his consecration of Ukraine and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Here in the Manila Cathedral, we will be having the consecration and the celebration also of the Holy Mass on March 25, Friday at 6 p.m. This event is open to everyone. You may wish to come here in uh, the Manila Cathedral to join us physically in the celebration of the Holy Mass and the consecration. The event, our celebration, will be led by our beloved Archbishop, His Eminence, Jose Cardinal Advincula. And this uh, consecration also will be uh, broadcasted live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel for those who may want to join us online. And also in our own homes, sana po sa mga kahit sa sarili nating mga tahanan sa March 25, Solemnity ng Annunciation, Kung hindi man po tayo makakasama physically dito, maari rin po tayong mag-alay ng ating mga sariling panalangin para sa kapayapaan sa Ukraine at Russia sa March 25. Nagpapatuloy pa rin po ang kaguluhan doon at marami pong mga inosente, lalo na mga bata na namatay at uh, naging uh, apektado dahil sa karahasan na ito. That is why Pope Francis is really trying his very best to mediate between the two countries and also to offer prayers for peace. And so we invite you again this March 25 Friday at 6 p.m. as we join and become one with Pope Francis in consecrating Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We also would like to thank you for uh, sharing and contributing uh, in this uh, Sunday collection to be given to our brothers and sisters in Ukraine who are now bearing the hardships uh, by this war, by this uh, violence. Thank you for sharing the fruit of your holiness this Lenten season. Let us now all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful. And in your kindness, grant your servants this grace that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>